What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Okay, this is another running and training vlog, the weekly running and training vlog where the main reason for this video is that I wanna hear about you and I wanna hear about your weeks running. Go ahead and write in the comments. Let me know how your week went as far as training goes. Let me know if there was anything special. Did you do any really good workouts that you're proud of? Doesn't all have to be positive. Did you feel like an injury coming on and you took some days off? Has this been a down week for you? Do you have races coming up and you're tapering? All of that, go ahead and hit me up in the comments. Okay, so yeah, this week, this week was a great week for me. This was my lower work week of the two week rotation that I usually do. I did have something good come in yesterday. Looks a little something like this. Yes, I finally got my hands on a pair of Nike's Next Percent 2. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. Okay, I bought them because I will be racing in them when I start racing again in the fall, definitely for the Boston Marathon, but I will be taking them out for a couple of training runs. And that's what I will film my review after on those training runs. So stay tuned for the channel for that. That's that's gonna be a fun one. And I'm sure several of you, in fact, I'm sure loads of you have already bought the Next Percent 2s. If you've got them and you've run in them, let me know in the comments below what you think of them. Okay, okay. There was a couple of things that I wanted to talk to you guys about this week before we go into my training and the things that I did throughout the week. So. I've been looking at a couple of articles online and this first one it drew my attention. It was something that I wanted to speak to you about. The article is titled, Exercise Addiction, Seven Signs Your Workout is Controlling You. And before we go any further, I will link to it in the show notes below. Oh, and before we get into that, guys, if you like talking about running, if you like just chatting with your running buddies, if you like giving props to your running friends for all the activities they do, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. You're probably wondering how it helps my channel. Well, by giving this video a thumbs up, it actually tells YouTube to push it out to other people that may find this type of content useful. Okay, this article, and I'm gonna kind of be looking at the screen here as I'm talking to you. So this article, it's based on it's based on going to the gym a lot. But you and I, we do go to the gym, we do work out, we do our weights, but mainly you and I are runners. I think it's safe to make that assumption seeing as this is a running channel, running is probably your primary sport. So, number one. Number one, the way to tell that your workout is controlling you. You work out to make up for meals or body parts you don't like. This one, I, I don't know. It seems to be a very trendy thing to say that I run because I like cake or beer or wine or sweets. But really it's an incredibly unhealthy way to look at your running because that frames running as a punishment rather than a reward in itself. We should approach running as something that we're lucky to do. As far as body parts you don't like, listen, no body shaming. I understand where they're coming from by not liking a body part, but no shaming. Every runner has a runner's body. And it's up to us, it's up to you and me to make sure that all runners know that. If you think that's true, give this video a thumbs up right now. Moving on, moving on to number two. Okay, number two is you're always at the gym, but let's change this. Let's change it to you're always working out or you're always running. But running for most of us, I think is kind of self-regulating. We can only run so much before we get too run down. There may be some of you out there that actually do experience some of these things that I'm gonna mention. And, and again, no shame. Let me know in the comments below if you feel comfortable letting me know which ones of these that you actually can relate to. So number two is that you're always at the gym, you're always running, you're always working out, that kind of thing. Now that I think about it, I think I would probably work out a lot more if I didn't have work. Work always gets in the way. I always have to be done by a certain time in the morning so I can get off and go to work. But with that said, I've had a very, very light workout day today, but we're gonna get into that in just a few minutes. Number three, you feel tired most of the time. This is a good one, this is a good one. Now, you can't get it confused with being tired because you've been working out. Sometimes we're gonna feel tired after we go for a nice long run. That is not the same as being tired all the time. If you're tired all the time, it means you're not giving your body enough time to recover. You're not getting enough sleep. You're not having enough downtime between your workouts. I don't want anyone getting confused with the normal fatigue and tiredness that comes with running. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about just a constant state of tiredness, a constant state of fatigue. It's also a sign of overtraining, but that would also tie into that you're always running. You're always at the gym. Number four, you change plans to accommodate your workout schedule. Now, when I first read this, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because you know what? The the obesity epidemic is, is out there, right? I think I live in the United States. I think 70% of people in the United States are either overweight or obese. So perhaps, perhaps making fitness a priority is a good thing, obviously up to a certain point. But what the article is talking about is if you are ditching your friends in order to go work out. I think this one is easily remedied. I think it's easily remedied by just 
planning ahead. I like to remove the barriers. I know that I am going to get tired as the day goes on. I know that I feel better if I run in the morning rather than the afternoon. So with that in mind, I usually won't make plans early in the morning because I know I'm going for my run. Also, most of my runs are between 4 and 5 a.m. So there's not a lot of plans that I can cancel at that time in the morning. But that's neither here nor there. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, number five. Your feelings about exercise include words like mandatory, guilt, anxiety, and rigid. This is a good one. And this, I think, is a very easy trap to fall into because many of us are training for races. Many of us have goals that are in the future that we want to meet. So let's say you've got a big race coming up. You think you're getting in shape. You want to run a PR at your next race. You may look at your runs as more mandatory. It's something that I have to do. I see a lot of comments with people that miss their runs and they kind of feel guilty about it. So they're going to do double the next day. And obviously, if you're feeling guilty because of that, anxiety just comes right in. And the last word is rigid. I think it is fine to have a little rigidity in your training as long as you're flexible with it. That's right. I just said you have to be flexible with your rigidity. So this is kind of funny because we have to kind of toe the line, right? We have to put in a little bit of effort in order to make sure our goals get met. To other people, to other people that don't do what we do, to other people that don't treat fitness as an important aspect of their life, to those that aren't training for something, it may seem rigid that we want to run five or six or seven days a week, but it's all a matter of perspective. And that's why you come here to this channel to talk with other like-minded runners like us, because we understand, but we also understand that you can take it too far. So if you ever feel rigid in your training, if you feel like it's mandatory, if you feel bad, if you don't do it, let me know in the comments below. I know that there have definitely been times in my life when I have felt that my workouts are mandatory. Like I don't feel good moving forward if I don't do a certain workout of the day. I'm actually in a pretty healthy place right now as far as my fitness goes. So it's very easy for me to talk about times in the past when I was a lot more rigid with my training. Number six, number six is that your results are diminishing. Now this is a funny thing. We have to kind of find that line. And the funny thing is, is that the line is different for each and every one of us. Some of us could run 20 miles a week. The next person could run 30 miles a week. But if the first person runs 30 miles a week and the second person runs 40 miles a week, you may not see those same gains as if you lowered your mileage. Know that more is not always more. Number seven, you have a negative body image. Listen, I totally understand it. I totally get it. We are bombarded with societal expectations of what a body should look like. This is a safe space. There is no perfect body. Try not to get caught up with it. Listen, it's, it's easy to say. I have been there too. But me talking to you, I know realistically that that is not true. And we just have to have each other's backs to remind each other and always give support. Was that heavy? Maybe that was a little too heavy. But you know what? Those things, those things are very important for you and I as athletes to consider moving forward in our running life. Okay, let's get right into my week of training. It started off with a fantastic 13.3 miles. 13.3 miles is very easy. Do you like my easy runs? Followed it up on Monday with 10 miles. Again, just nice and easy. Now, the days are getting very warm here in Florida. So an easy run is not always easy. When that dew point is high, the humidity is high, it makes easy running feel considerably more difficult. Sometimes I'll look at my watch and I'll see that my heart rate is exactly where I want it to be, in a zone two, and yet it feels really difficult. The easy run feels difficult. Moving right along to Wednesday, 7.3 miles. Again, nice and easy. Thursday, brilliant, 7.6 miles. And this was a good run. Started out slow, but then I started to feel good and warm up. And I realized that I hadn't picked up the pace and got my legs spinning a little quicker at all this whole week. So I did eight 90 second pickups with 30 seconds recovery in between. And by the end of those interval sessions, I felt like I had just a really good workout. Friday was 11 miles now. Let's Friday, this weekend, we had actually fantastic weather here in Florida. I think it's probably the last weekend of relatively cool weather before the summer hits for good. It was in the high 60s. Saturday was my long run day. I met my buddy Tyler. We did 17 miles and that was pretty good. You know, I usually run alone. 99.9% .9 of the time I run alone. So to run with someone for a couple hours, it just made that time fly by a really good run. Sunday, I decided to do something a little different than I usually do. And this actually ties into what we were talking about, about exercise addiction, but I decided to have a incredibly easy day. I ran 5.1 miles. I included eight 30 second pickups with 30 seconds recovery just to get those legs turning over. But I guess my point is only 5.1 miles. And when I came home, I went for a walk 
with my wife, which was really fun to catch up and actually do something together. I didn't even get on the Peloton on Sunday. So a Sunday was a, a fantastic rest day. Had a, those 5.1 miles are very easy. And uh, yeah, I think my body really needed it. I think the week topped out at 71 miles. I still felt like I needed that recovery day on Sunday. It really hit the spot. Actually, thinking back, I think that's actually higher than I've been running in the last month or so. I think my mileage has been in the 50s and 60s range. So that's probably why I needed that day off just because the miles were getting a bit higher. Even though I took Sunday off from riding on the Peloton, I still knocked out a shade under 111 miles. So I'm pretty happy with that. Overall, a great training week. I hope you had the same and I hope you will let me know how it went. I post new running videos at least twice a week. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.